Hey guys, Game Alpha Gray here. And you are watching Captain Algebra. Dig it! Hey everybody, Captain Algebra here. And it's my favorite time of the year when I get to talk about all the games that I beat in 2023 including some analytics. So we're going to get started right away because once again, I beat over 100 games. That is four years in a row that I've done that. This year, I end up with 102. So it's getting tougher to do, but we're keeping that streak alive. Now, as a reminder, these are just games that I've beaten for the first time. I don't include games that I've beaten before, except for a few exceptions. If it's a port I haven't played before, I'll count it. And then maybe it's a game that I haven't gotten the best ending before. I'll count that. But otherwise, all these games are games I have not played before. Otherwise, every year you'd see stuff like Super C and Streets of Rage 2. And I don't know, I don't want to talk about those every single year. So let's get started. We're going to start with the consoles that I beat just one game for. So we're going to start with the N64. And for the N64, um, for a total of 5 hours and 15 minutes, I played Perfect Dark. This is a game that I played back in the day and stopped playing because I got stuck. So I was like, I want to finish this. Just realized it was the final level that I was on. So I was so close to beating it back in the day, but glad to finally beat that. Next on the Super Nintendo that I spent one hour and 15 minutes on, Circus Mystery starring Mickey Mouse. Then on the DS for a total of 29 and a half hours, I played The Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks. So this one was really fun. I actually did the playthrough with EC Myers. So we've been talking about it for years that we want to play that game kind of together and talk about it as we go. So we finally found a chance, I believe in June or July, uh, that we both had time that we could play it. And it was really cool just to discuss the game as we went and share secrets that we found and share strategies. And it was a lot of fun. Having these community playthroughs always makes games better. So I was very excited to finally play through that. And then next on the Master System, for an hour and 15 minutes, we've got Altered Beast. I love Altered Beast on the Sega Genesis. This version is terrible, but I wanted to beat it because I do love the Genesis version. Next, we have the Game Boy Color, and I spent, let's see, three and a half hours on this game, and that is Croc 2. I really like Croc on the PS1, so I figured I would try Croc 2. It was a solid game. And then finally, the last console that I beat one game for was the Wii. And I spent five hours on this game, and that was Wario Land Shake It. So I'm a big fan of the Wario Land games. It seems like they get worse, though, as they go. First one is still my favorite, and that might be nostalgia playing a factor because I grew up with it. But everyone after that, they kind of, I know with, I don't remember with this one for sure, but I know with two and three, you can't die. It's stupid. Like, I, I don't know. I, I've talked about it before. I don't like that. I want a little bit of a challenge, so Wireline Shake was pretty cool. I got to use the, the Wii Mote and have to shake it to, to get money and stuff. I didn't 100% it, but I did enjoy it. All right, next we're going to talk about the consoles that I beat two games for. First, we're going to talk about the 3DS, which I spent 11 hours and 45 minutes on. We've got Disney's Planes. And then Chibi Robo Ziplash. Next, we'll talk about the 360 games. And for that, we spent 27 hours. First of all, we've got Dead Space, a game I've been wanting to play for years when the remake came out. Like, well, I better play the original. And then finally, Red Dead Redemption. I've been wanting to play that game for years because I want to get to two because I've heard it's a great game. So I finally sat down and played that. I uh, really enjoyed both those 360 games. Next, we've got the PSP, which I spent three hours and 15 minutes playing these. First of all, we've got Platypus. This is a claymation shooter that was suggested to me from uh, Chris Pico, and it was a solid game. And then next was Twisted Metal Head On. So after playing Twisted Metal Black, I wanted to play more Twisted Metal games, and I had not played this one. This one was pretty easy. I think I only spent a little over an hour playing through the whole campaign, but it was fun. And then finally, the last console I beat two games for was the PS1. And I spent a grand total of 16 hours on these two games. So first of all, we've got Tiny Tank. We'll talk more about that game later. And then Ape Escape, one of the Cartridge Club games, Cartridge Club games of the month. I didn't think I'd actually get to this this year because I couldn't find a copy. I went to Mo Game Con, couldn't find it. And then a local store posted they got it in. 
like a couple weeks before the end of the month. So I grabbed it, played through it, I enjoyed it. I didn't love the gimmick of using the analog sticks to catch the monkeys and stuff. Felt like they were just doing it to use the analog sticks and it would have been better with buttons, but it was still a fun game nonetheless. All right, next we're gonna talk about the PS2, which I beat four games for this year for a grand total of 38 and a half hours. First, we've got We Love Katamari. Such a weird game, but a follow-up to Katamari Damacy, which I really enjoyed. And we got Sly 2, Band of Thieves. This is a request from Peter Bateman. I enjoyed it overall. It was probably a little bit longer than it should be. And I prefer the more linear style of the first game compared to the open world of this one. But it is cool that you got to play with Bentley and Murray more. Next, another Cartridge Club game of the month, Twisted Metal Black. So I did beat this as a kid, but I definitely cheated or I put it on easy mode. So I finally beat it legitimately, at least my version of legitimately. Um, so for that, it's gotta be on at least default difficulty setting. No save states, no cheats, anything like that. So I think back in the day I'd either use che cheats or I would play on easy mode. And for me to beat games now, it's gotta be at least on default settings. That game's tough. I was very uh, surprised at how many times I had to replay levels. It's very hard to avoid damage and the health pickups go away eventually, which is super annoying, but we got through it. And then finally, a backlog roulette game. Contra Shattered Soldier. That it? Yeah, we did it. One of my favorite Contra games. This is probably the toughest Contra game I've ever played. People talk about like Contra and Super C being tough and Contra 3 and Contra Hardcore. No. Contra Shattered Soldier is the hardest Contra game I've ever played. It took me so long to learn it. Uh, I think it went like four streams plus time off stream just practicing the levels uh, because it's, it's basically in one continuous boss rush mode. But man, once I got it down, I had so much fun with it. Next, we're going to talk about the Game Boy, which I beat five games for for a grand total of nine hours of gameplay. First, we've got Mousetrap Hotel. Balloon Kid, which is a spinoff of Balloon Fight. The Bugs Bunny and Crazy Castle. That game has too many levels. We have Mega Man Dr. Wily's Revenge and Mega Man 3. So this was a childhood game and I believe I saw Mr. Matthews, he was doing a lot of gameplay of Mega Man games and he talked about this one. I was like, you know what? Time for me to actually go back and play the Mega Man games on the Game Boy that I have. So I started with the first one and then I had to do three. So that was fun to knock, go, knock off a childhood game. All right, next we're going to talk about the GBA, which I beat seven games for this year for a grand total of 17 hours and 45 minutes. So first we're going to talk about Monster House. I've always heard that this was a good game and it was pretty fun. It's kind of, it's Zelda-like. Um, it's, you know, that adventure game going around, getting new power-ups and stuff. It, it was pretty solid. Not as good as people say it is, but it was fun. Then we got another licensed game, Home on the Range. Got his ass. I think that's it. This game was much better than expected. It's basically a platformer and a beat em up mixed together. This is better than any licensed game has any right to be. I was very impressed. We have Spy Kids Challenger. We'll talk more about this one later. We've got Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius. We've got X-Men Reign of Apocalypse, which was a solid beat-em-up. A lot easier than I expected. I thought it'd be a little bit tougher, but it was pretty good. And then Iridian 3D. I heard good things about Iridian 2, so I had to try the first one first. And it's all right. A lot of good ideas, but the way the game is designed, it's very hard to tell where enemies are and where bullets are and to avoid them. So the hit detection's rough, but I've heard they fixed that in Iridian 2. And then finally... Finding Nemo, another solid licensed game. I don't know what it is about the GBA, but licensed games in the GBA are pretty good. 
you should check these ones out. All right, next we're gonna talk about the two consoles that I beat nine games for. So first talk, talk about the Switch, which I played for a grand total of 139 hours and 15 minutes. We've got the Grinch Christmas Adventures, Disney's Illusion Island, Eight Doors, Aram's Afterlife Adventures. This is a pretty solid Metroidvania. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. So unlike Breath of the Wild, I did not 100% this one because I didn't really feel like it. I felt like they improved a lot on Breath of the Wild. I thought the dungeons were better, but I hate the crafting mechanic. I, if I wanted to play crafting, I would play Minecraft. I don't want to craft. So I was not a fan. I know I've seen really cool things that you can make in this game, but no, it's, it's not for me. We have Wallachia, Reign of Dracula. This is kind of like a Castlevania co uh, clone, but you use like spears to throw instead. And it's pretty fun. We have Ari and the Secret of the Seasons, a decent 3D platformer. We have Rain on Your Parade. This is a really fun game. You basically play as a cloud and you get to like ruin people's days by raining on them, electrocuting them, stuff like that. Um, it's a pretty fun game. Then we've got the Super Mario RPG remake. I was pumped for this game because I love Super Mario RPG. The big problem with this is they made it ridiculously easy. With like the splash damage you can do, there were some enemy, some fights that in the regular version, I would take hits on where I didn't even take a single hit. I don't think I used a pick me up until I was about 75% of the way through the game. It was ridiculously easy. And then finally, Super Mario Wonder. I did not think I'd get through this game this year. I got it for Christmas. But uh, it was, I actually finished it on New Year's Eve and it was fun. Uh, I like the Wonder Flowers. It makes for some really cool levels. I also like the different power-ups that you have now. I do not like some of the badges. Springs are never fun when you constantly are jumping and invisibility in this one is stupid. You can't even see where Mario is. Like you can kind of see where he's walking. If you jump through clouds, you can see where he is, but otherwise it's very tough which makes the final, final test at the end of the game in Special World really annoying because the last section of the game of that level is the invisibility and you haven't been able to save your progress for like three, three parts of that stage. So it sucks. Definitely, if you're gonna do invisibility, make sure you can see the character better. All right, the next console that I beat nine games for was the NES for a grand total of 24 hours and 45 minutes. We have Wheel of Fortune Family Edition. We have Mickey Mouse Capade and a homebrew, Fire and Rescue. So I saw Eugene stream this and it looked really cool. My only problem with this is so super short. There's like, I want to say seven levels and then you just loop. And I think you have to do the loop like three times to beat it. So it's super short, um, but it's really cool. Like you go as a, around as a firefighter, putting out fires in houses. I really enjoyed it. I just I want it longer. And next we've got Double Dare. The Bugs Bunny and Crazy Castle. So I had played the Game Boy, I had to play this one. I think the Game Boy one has like 20 extra levels. It's ridiculous. Anticipation. Bionic Commando, this has been on my list for years. Now the mechanic takes some getting used to with the arm, but it's a lot of fun when you get used to it. Trog. Please tell me it's that's it. Yeah, we did it! Ho oh, ho! That's awesome. Basically kind of like a Pac-Man clone that I heard Nefarious West talk about years ago. And it's really fun. It's kind of long, there's 50 levels, and it can be kind of tough, especially if you do it without warps, but it was a fun playthrough. And my favorite NES game that I beat this year, Fester's Quest. There it is, fuck yeah. That was awesome. This game is phenomenal. People shit on it all the time, but I don't understand why. It's by Sunsoft and they've got a good track record. The music's great. Yes, it's annoying that uh, you have to keep pressing the button to fire. It'd be great if it had auto fire or you know a turbo version where you just hold the button down. But if you really don't like that, then just use the turbo, a turbo controller and then you can play it, you know? Um, yes, some of the power-ups are kind of annoying because they get so wide, they hit walls and makes it hard at enemies. But as long as you line yourself up right, you're gonna be fine. 
But that was fun. I streamed it in one night. I think it took like six, six and a half hours, but it was totally worth it. Because when you do die, you go all the way back to the beginning. Now all the bosses are taken care of and stuff. So you just gotta, you know, it doesn't take very long to walk your way back to where you were. But that was kind of a flaw, but it doesn't make it a bad game. You should try it out. All right, next we're gonna talk about the arcade games I beat this year, which I played for a grand total of six hours and 45 minutes. First, I had X-Men at Midwest Gaming Classic. We went to Up Down. We usually go there one of the nights and play some arcade games and drink some beer. And I don't remember who played it. I don't remember if we had six people, but it was cool. I think that was the first time I'd ever actually played that game. And I know people talk about it all the time. So that was fun. And then at Mo Game Con, I beat Ninja Baseball Batman, which is a really cool beat em up. Once again, I don't know who played it, but it was a fun. And then the rest are all on the Capcom Classics Volume 2 that I have on the PS2. So we beat, uh, I believe, eight games there. Varth, Sidearms Hyperdyne, Tiger Road, Quiz and Monsters. That game was really cool. It's a quiz game, but it's, uh, it's like uh, an action game at the same time. So you have to answer questions to be able to defeat the enemies that you're fighting. They're like dragons and wraiths and all these different mythical creatures and stuff. And depending on the size of the creature, you have to answer more questions to beat them. Now, some of the questions are tough to answer because this is from like the 80s or 90s, but it was a really cool game. We have Avengers, terrible game. Last Duel, and then I uh, there's a game called Three Wonders that's like three games in one. I beat two of them. One was Chariot, which is a shooter, and then the other one was Midnight Wanderers, which is like a platformer. So some of the solid arcade games there. Uh, I basically use that at the end of the year to try and get through more games to get to 100 this year because arcade games can be beaten so quickly. All right, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. We're down to the three consoles left. So the three consoles I played the most on. So number three is the PS4, which I played for a grand total of 125 hours and 15 minutes. So um, first we're going to talk about, hold on, I got these in the wrong order. There we go. Astro Knight. Pretty decent Metroidvania. Dog your eye. So it's like a samurai, but you're a dog. Feeder Rhythm, Final Bar Line. So I love rhythm games, and this is really cool because it's all the Final Fantasy music. Now this is really long. It was like 35 hours, I want to say, uh, because it, it covers every single game in the series. Um, it made me want to play a Final Fantasy game because of the music, but at the same time, I know I don't like RPGs, so we'll see. Kingdom of Arcadia. Foxy Land, so I'd be just the first one on the collection. Uncharted Lost Legacy, so I enjoy the Uncharted game, so I wanted to check out this one, which is kind of like, it's almost like DLC, it's a little bit shorter, but it's kind of cool to play as the two girls, um, Chloe and Nadine, I believe. Was it Nadine? Yes, Nadine. Um, so it's kind of cool to see their side. Then I played Harry Potter years five through seven on the Harry Potter collection. And we got Ice Age, Scratch Nutty Adventure. This game could be better if it wasn't so buggy. And then some of the favorite PS4 games I beat this year, we've got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Shredder's Revenge. I waited years to get this just because I wanted the VHS style case like this. And so I had to not watch anybody play it. I had to stay away from spoilers. And man, this game is fantastic. I still like Turtles in Time and Hyperstone Heist better from back in the day, but this was a great game. Another Cartridge Club game of the month, we had Alien Isolation. This is for October, so I streamed the whole thing. This is really cool, definitely a, a freaky game. Definitely annoying at times. Sometimes it just feels like there's no way that you can get away from the alien. I remember there's one, port, one part towards the end. I had to go in a room and then go outside of the room to another room, and then something got messed up back in that original room, so I had to go back there. But the only way to get there was like through this long curving hallway that didn't really have any places to hide. And it felt like every single time that I started making my way down that hallway, the alien would show up and I'd die. So that was super annoying. But it's a good game otherwise. Another cartridge club game of the month. In fact, it was for December, and that is Celeste. Be more serene. There it is, guys. The summit. We did it. If you like stuff like Super Meat Boy, this is a great game. 
Um, you're gonna die a lot, but once you die, you respawn immediately. So it makes you wanna keep going. It's not like there's long loading screens or anything like that, but that was really fun. Another backlog roulette game, The Evil Within. I've been wanting to play this for years. I really liked it. I know some people don't. I thought it was a great game. It really reminded me of Resident Evil 4 at times, just with kind of the set pieces. Um, so that was a cool game. And then probably my favorite PS4 game of this year was Cuphead. Knockout! There it is! Hell yeah! Dude, that final form is ridiculous. Ridiculously easy. Now I'm getting a lot of hate for this. This game's not that hard. I beat this game in a little over five hours. Uh, I think it took two streams. Um, if you grew up playing run and guns like Contra and Super C and all those, this game's not gonna be that hard. It's just pattern recognition and boss fights. Super fun, not that hard. I think the, the difficulty of that game is overblown. Next, we're going to talk about the console I beat the second most games for, and that is the Sega Genesis, which I beat 15 games for, for a grand total of 60 hours. So I got RBI Baseball 3, RBI Baseball 4, sometimes it's just fun to sit back and play a baseball game. Then I finally sat down and played Mega Man The Wily Wars, which this actually consists of four games, so it's a kind of like a remastered version of Mega Man 1, 2, and 3, and then they have Wily Tower, which is super short, but it's pretty fun. A childhood game of mine that I finally went back to beat, and that's Barkley Shut Up and Jam. Animaniacs. So this one I streamed a while, a while ago for Genesis A to Z, didn't beat it, so I wanted to go back and finish it. We have Beyond Oasis, an RPG, an action RPG that I've always heard good things about. Now it does claim to be, I think, the largest adventure game ever for the Genesis, but it's only like a six hour game. So what does that say for Sega Genesis adventure games? They're not that long. NBA Jam. Yes. Oh no. Oh, come on. Well, we got the win. Gotta get ready for the picture. Finally went and actually played through an entire series where I played every single team. That was fun. Another childhood game I finally played through, NFL Football 94, starring Joe Montana. So we grew up playing this all the time as kids, but I never actually completed the season and won the Super Bowl. So I finally did with the Houston Oilers. Another game for Genesis A to Z that I went back to beat, and that is Ghostbusters. This is a decent Ghostbusters game, but I feel like it gets more credit than it deserves. I think just because like the NES games were so bad that people are like, oh, Ghostbusters on Genesis is great, but I didn't think it was that good. And then Dan's gonna love this one, Quack Shot. There it is, yep, so you can hit him with anything. Finally, someone who is worthy of the treasure. This is not a poor game, Dan. It's fun, you should try it, I enjoyed it. And then we've got The Punisher. So I picked this up, I believe at Midwest Gaming Classic this year. And then Chris Pico was over one time, he was in town, and we played a bunch of Genesis games, so we ran through that co-op, that was cool. And then the most recent Genesis game I get played, which is actually a Mega Drive game, we didn't get it in the States, was Golden Axe 3. <laughs> Yes! Dude! Boom! Yeah. Got it! Yeah. yeah! That one feels good. So Mega Dan and I just did a Mega Powers Monthly, and we ran through all three Genesis slash Mega Drive Golden Axe games. And so I have beaten that before solo, but I'm counting this because we got the best ending, which I had not done before. And plus we played a co-op, which is awesome. And finally, the console I played the most in 2023 was the PS5 for a grand total of 182 and a half hours. I do love me some PS5. So you combine PS5 and PS4, I played a lot of Sony this year. All right, so we got 16 games here. First, A Plague Tale Innocence. I've heard good things about the series, tried it out, and that was excellent, great story. Cartridge Club Game of the Month, River City Girls. It's a good beat em up, but I was a little disappointing. People talk about like it's one of the greatest beat em ups ever. To me, it does not hold a candle to like Streets of Rage 2 and the Turtles games and stuff. It, it was all right. 
lake. If you need a relaxing game, this is the one for you. You go to a town uh, that you grew up in and you help your dad because they're on vacation to uh, deliver the mail because he's a post office carrier. And you just drive around delivering packages and it's so relaxing. Bramble, the Mountain King. I believe this was recommended by Jen from Retro Rivals. That was a solid game. Clockwork Aquario. I believe uh, this was supposed to be an arcade game that was never released. Saw Eugene streaming it for uh, his Sandwich and Switch streams, and so I grabbed it on the PS5. That was a lot of fun. Oxide Room 104. Kena, Birds of Spirits. This game was fantastic. Definitely tough at times with some of the boss battles, but great story, great combat. You need to try this one out. Gray Hill Incident. The Medium. Talk more about this game in a little bit. Power Wash Simulator. I had to see what all the hype was about. Dark Pictures, The Devil and Me. I was a little bit disappointed in this one. I thought it'd be better because it's about um, H. H. Holmes, um, the guy who like had a murder castle in Chicago. And I don't know, I just thought it'd be a little bit better. It's still good, but I thought it'd be more about H. H. Holmes and stuff. We've got Pac-Man World Repack. They did a great job with this remake. Another great uh, remake, remaster, whatever it is, The Last of Us Part One. I bought this because I got it for a great deal. And I played it again just so I could experience this game again because I love the Last of Us series. A follow-up to one of my favorite PS4 games, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Not as good as Fallen Order, but still a very good Star Wars game. Marvel Spider-Man 2. This was another Cartridge Club game of the month and it is fantastic. If you have not played Spider-Man, Miles Morales, and Spider-Man 2, you need to. They are three of the greatest games of the last couple generations. The storytelling's great, the action's great, controls are great. I can't say any like bad things about these games. And finally, the uh, last game we're gonna talk about, one of my favorites that I played, Resident Evil 4 Remake. All right, so let's get into the analytics. We got a couple new things this year. This year I actually tracked how many hours I played every game. So we'll talk about that. I also came up with like a top three of my least favorite and my favorite games that I played this year. And so uh, let's get right into it. First, we're gonna look at the consoles. So in 2022, I played 18 consoles. In 2023, I played 19. So we went mo uh, one more up. So last year, I did not play Master System or the PSP. So those came in and I wanna say, I can't remember which console from last year. I didn't play anything on this year, but yeah. So one more console, which is awesome. Pretty typical for me, PS4, PS5, Switch, and Genesis are towards the top. Arcade and GBA, once again, made it towards the top, but that's just because towards the end of the year, I'm definitely trying to um, pad the stats a little bit, get to 100, and those games were kind of short. Next, you can see the total hours that I played this year. We had 707 and a half hours played total. With PS5 being the most, which makes sense, that was the console I beat the most. But one thing that's interesting here is Genesis was my second most played console when it comes to number of games completed. But it's only the fourth game uh, console when it comes to total hours played. Switch and PS4 were way more than that. And so uh, we'll get into the retro versus modern next. So this year I played 60 retro and 42 modern. So basically for me, anything from PS3, Xbox 360, and up, I consider retro, or sorry, modern, and then anything before that, it's considered uh, retro. Wii, I consider retro, and then DS, I consider retro, but 3DS, I don't, all right? And compared to 2022, it's very similar. I had 61 retro in 2022 and 46 modern, so that didn't really change. I mostly play retro games over modern, and one of the reasons for that, which I thought was really interesting, is when you look at the hours played for each, so obviously I played more retro games. However, I played way more hours on modern consoles. So 221 hours and 45 minutes on retro consoles and 485 hours and 45 minutes on modern consoles. People always ask how I beat so many games. This is it right here. You can see how much more time modern games take. I played 18 less modern games. However, I played 264 more hours 
on modern consoles. So if you want to up the amount of games you beat in a year, you've got to play more retro. Retro games are shorter, they're quicker to get through, a lot more pick up and play than modern games. So that's that was, I thought was super interesting. Then we got you uh, looking at my uh, months. So you can see I started off kind of slow, but then picked up in February and then kind of went down low as the school year was um, winding down. I got really busy. But then once I was full summer mode, July, beat a lot of games. And then you can see school starting up again. August, September went down. And then finally, November, December, I'm like, I want to get to 100 again. I didn't think I was going to do it this year, but I was like, I can do it. So beat a ton of games. So it ebbs and flows throughout the year. Um, looking at it from like a six month standpoint, I'd say it looks pretty similar. Um, I don't actually have the actual numbers about how many I beat in the first six months versus the second months, uh, second, uh, six months, but it, it's probably pretty close. Came out to about eight and a half games per month. Usually I like to get 10 games per month, so I get to 120 games every year, but eight and a half I'll take. And now let's go into my least favorite and favorite. So least favorite number three would be Tiny Tank on the PS1. This game was great at first, but then the more you went into it, the camera got worse. And then the boss fight at the end was one of the dumbest boss fights I've ever had to deal with. So you only had your base weapon, you didn't have any of your power-ups. The um, You were on a timer and the boss regained health. One of the most infuriating boss fights I've ever played. It took me hours to get through. It was super annoying. I'm not a fan of that game at all. Now for my favorite number three, that'd be Marvel Spider-Man 2. Such a great game. Uh, easily could have been my favorite, but two games slightly beat it out. So least favorite number two would be the Avengers on the arcade. This game, which just had terrible hit detection, the only reason I got through it was because of uh, infinite credits. But even that was tough to do because when you lost your credits, um, you got you basically went back to the, like a checkpoint or beginning of the level and you only had like four lives to get through a stage and It made it really tough especially with the poor hit detection and stuff, but we got through it somehow All right favorite number two would be Contra Shattered Soldier talked about how it's one of my favorite uh, Contra games of all time now part of that is just because the amount of time and effort I put into learning the game that grind is one of my favorite things about video games. Sometimes it's nice not to have to beat a game immediately. It's it's fun to work at it, and this was that game for me. Least favorite overall, Spy Kids Challenger. This has to be one of the dumbest games I've ever played. So one thing about me is I do not like high score challenges. I don't like games like Tetris and Pac-Man and Donkey Kong where you're basically just going for high score. That does not keep me into the game very long because it's just it's basically looping and stuff like that that's not fun that's basically what this game is there's like three or four levels you can play and you just keep doing them over and over and over again in order to get a higher score so basically i played through a little bit of each one i spent 15 minutes on it i'm considered beating uh beaten this game sucks now spy kids 3d on the gb i heard it's supposed to be better do not play spy kids challenger it sucks and my favorite game of all time or of all time that i played this year Resident Evil 4 Remake. I'm not going to talk too much about this because I'm coming out with my Game of the Year video for 2023 uh, soon, but I was a big fan of Resident Evil 4. I was not happy that they were doing the remake because the game was already a perfect game, but they did a phenomenal job with this, and I'm glad that I played it. The thing I want to talk about are my most disappointing and most surprising games of 2023. We're going to start with the most disappointing, and that was Power Watch Simulator. So this is a good game, but I had such high hopes because of all the good things people say about it. The problem is, it was overly long. It took me 35 hours to complete the game. For a game like Power Wash Simulator, I feel like a 15, maybe 20 hours would be tops. Second, this game is more anxiety inducing than relaxing. Because it shows you all the dirt, right? You can press a button, it shows like it shows up as orange. Well, the problem is you don't have to get like every single little speck. But for someone like me, I want to get every little speck. If I see a little bit of orange, I want to get it. On top of that, some of the crevices are super hard to clean, and it just gets really annoying. Some of the levels are fine, not big deals. Like, I liked houses and stuff, and this, uh, the skate park was really cool. But then stuff like the merry-go-round, or the slide, or the fountain, just was not very fun to do. As for my most surprising game, The Medium. I really didn't expect much of this game. I was at GameStop, 
it's not for cheap, so I grabbed it, and then when I tried it out, it seemed pretty cool, so I decided to play through it. And it was a very interesting experience. The story was very interesting. You're this girl who has these powers, can kind of, kind of like see ghosts and speak to them, and so you go to this abandoned um, site in Russia. I, th I believe it was a hotel, and some really bad stuff happened. And you're starting to get all these senses, seeing all these dead people and these memories, and then there's like this monster that's coming after you. And you have these powers that you can go into like that, the spirit realm almost, and you need that to solve puzzles, but then when you're there, that's where that monster attacks you. And it was super interesting. I had a great time with it. I really hope they make a sequel, because that was a lot of fun. So there you go. There was my year in gaming for 2023. Again, uh, very cool that I got to 100 games beaten. That's four years in a row. Barely got there. Took it till you know the last minute to get there. I believe I, Celeste was the hundredth game I beat, and that was that was this past Friday, which was the 29th. Yeah, I beat it December 29th. So only had a couple days to spare. So really looking forward to 2024. Really don't have any go goals for this year. Sure, it'd be nice to get to 100 again, but it's getting harder to do that. I feel like I've played a lot of the short games that I own, and sometimes I just want to sit down with the long game and just take my time. So I think really the only goal I'm going to have for this year is to beat at least one game on every console. It's going to be kind of tough to do because consoles like the PSP, the Master System, the Turbo Graphics, and um, I think that's it. I don't have a lot of games for, and so I've beaten a lot of games already. And so we'll see if I can get it done. There's no guarantees, but I'm looking forward to playing more retro again. And again, that's my biggest tip. If you want to beat more games, play more retro. Modern's not going to let you get through a lot of games in a year. Um, but that's just my two cents. Thanks for watching, everybody. Cheers to a great gaming year in 2024. And I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching, everybody. This is Captain Algebra, signing off.